Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to the seventh lecture of the designing and implementation of this by pipeline code. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have seen how we are going. Uh, we have implemented the stop module of the write back cycle, and in the on previous those lectures, we have implemented each of the uh, cycle modules in each of the lectures, like fetch cycle, decode, execute, memory, and previous was the write back. So in today's lecture, what we are going to do that we are going to connect all that individual uh, cycle top modules and combine them into a top module, which we'll be calling as a implementation of pipeline top. And then we are going to run a basic few codes on it to see either of our pipeline implementation is working correctly or, or not. And what can be the possible errors we are going to face in it and what are its solutions. So without any delay, let's start with our uh, lecture. So this is the whole pipeline data which I have shown in the uh, first lecture, I guess when we are talking about the overview of the pipelining that we have the goal in our mind that we are going to implement this whole entire architecture. For that, we have the, uh, uh, break it into some of the chunks and we have converted it into five cycles uh, in which we have uh, called the first as a fetch cycle, then second stage as a decode cycle, third stage as a uh, execute cycle, fourth stage as a memory cycle, and the fifth stage as a write back cycle. So all of this implementation have been already done. So now all what we have to do is just to have to connect all of these together on a top module by uh, in initiating of individual modules and connect them together by using the entire file. Definitely we are not going to use any registers in that because all of the registers have been already implemented into the entire uh, top modules. So we don't need extra register to be implemented on the outside because if we do that, so then we are going, uh, we are uh, just introducing an extra pieces of register and uh, adding a delay into our pipeline stages. Or you can say that you are adding an extra knob delay into your pipeline stage, which is not necessary. So uh, let's start with our coding. So let's move to the VS Studio part. Apparently, I've just opened all of my files here already, and you can see that I've already created a pipeline top. And previously, we have individually includes all of this top module of which modules we are going to use. But as we are going designing the top modules, I've just um, migrated all of the include uh, top headers to, to the top file. So that all I'm just going to run the top file and all of the files will go to be included parallelly. So let's start with our module. Uh, so uh, first, we definitely we know that we have to declare the module declaration and module declaration we can say as a pipeline top, right? So in previous, we have been mentioning many of the IO ports of our module. Definitely there were lots of IO ports for each of the modules. But as we know on the top module, there will be only single two IO ports which are going to define here. That is will be a clock and the reset. There will be a no in output ports, nothing else the ports we are going to define. We are just going to describe as a clock and reset will be a, a global uh, input to our, any of our designs. So from the test page, we are just going to provide the clock and just reason and the, all of the working will be done internally by our design. So let's just add module here. Okay, so we have done with the module declaration. Let's start with our declaration of the IO. So it is a very straightforward. I don't, uh, I just have to declare an input. Clock and comma. Reset. That's all for it. Okay, then here the most of the use we are going to do is we are going to use an interim wires because definitely these wires will going to connect each of our module together. So that we have to mention them, but definitely we are going to describe all of them after when we initiate the modules and start connecting them, right? So let's start with the module initiation. So first uh, our module will be our fetch cycle because the uh, first stage of our pipeline is the fetch, fetch stage which is going to fetch our instruction from the instruction memory and then it is going to provide it to our decode cycle. So what we can do just going to copy paste this fetch top module IO ports and just going to paste it here. Okay, so fetch cycle I don't know, so I'm just naming it as a F1. You can name any of the using convention here. So we can also use let's say fetch. Uh, so it will be a very much easy to understand what naming convention you are using, right? So starting are some of our inputs posts and then we have our output post instruction DPC then all of these are our inputs posts, right? So 
we are done with our declaration of the patch. Uh, let's click on just going to have some syntaxing here. Okay, so you can see that uh, I have tried my best to use the naming convention such a way that all of my inputs have been de uh, described, uh, defined earlier, and then I have provided my outputs. So in this way that I can easily track what are my inputs because if we do both inputs and output uh, combined, so then sometimes we get uh, uh, that, uh, confused that which posts are in post and which posts are not. We have to go and see it uh, again and again. So to remove that complexity, I've just uh, tried to follow the sequence that I've just mentioned the inputs first and then I've mentioned the output so that it can easily, I know that all of these are my inputs. So I have to just connect it and I know what are the inputs which are going to be as an input, of input for the next module. So after the fetch cycle, let's just our copy paste the simplest our uh, second module, which is our decode module, right? So we are uh, have a second module here, decode cycle. We are just name it as a decode here, and just quickly. So here also we have used that also that we have four uh, four inputs and the rest of the uh, bits are our sorry I we have six one two six inputs and the rest of us are outputs which are going towards the execute state. So as you can see by mentioning the subscript, uh, it's very much easy to recognize which signals are belong to which stage. So definitely this makes your coding a little bit easy and uh, easy to understand for the other users. Well. Okay, so we are done with here. Now, well, we have declared the decode state in the first state. Now, the third state will be our. Execute stage, right? Let's just copy our execute top. Let's place it in here. Okay, so just to save the little bit of the uh, time of in our video, so I've just mentioned all of the modules very much quickly and uh, have provided their syntax. So as you can say, see here, we have uh, introduced our first top module. We have also mentioned uh, initiated our decode top module. We have initiated our execute top module. We have also initiated our memory top module and we have also initiated our write back top module, right? So now what we have to do is have to connect this very much quickly. So first let's start with our right, global inputs that which will be a clock and reset. So just placing clock and reset in every possible modules which we have used here. And now it's time for the reset to be get connected. Okay, so let's start with our module declarations. Also that first we are going to declare a single wires. So you can see that PC source here is an input of single bit. So I'm just going to uh, copy and paste it here. Right, so I can use it. So I'm just going to connect the PC source E with the PC source output of my execute cycle, right? Because I know that this is a PC source is coming output from my execute cycle. So I'm just going to simply connect it. And the species sources is not have been used in any other module, so just have a single connection for that, right? And after that, we have a wire of you can say here that the PC target is of 32 bits. So I can mention here that the 32 bit actually I'm going by line to line, so it will be easy to connect it very much quickly possible. Right. So I'm just going to connect this PC target E here, and I know that the PC target E is the input of my fair cycle, but it is an output of my execute cycle because it helps from the subscript that I can uh, just uh, 
uh, debug it or target it from where the output has been coming. So definitely I'm just going to map the PC target to the output port of my execute cycle. And then we have an instruction D, which is also 32 bit, and this is an output. So as I've men uh, men already mentioned, a 31 bit wire here. So I just mentioned instruction D here, paste it here, and that instruction D will also going to be an input as to the my decode cycle. And this P instruction D will not going to be use any of the instruction uh, other modules. So definitely we have only connection of uh, two ports. Then we have a PCD, which is also as an output port. So just mention it as a 32 bit wire and connect it from the output port of our fetch cycle as an input port of our decode cycle. And now we can see that the these receptors have not used anywhere in other uh, module as well. So we are not going to connect it to any of the modules. Then we have PC plus 4D. This is also 32 bit uh, wire value. So just PC 4D will be going to be connected from the fetch cycle output towards the input of my decode cycle. So definitely you can see that this, uh, this how we can naming convention make your connection so much easy for you. Right, so we have done with our uh, uh, for formal connection of our fetch cycle completely. Now let's see how a decode cycle, uh, there are a few signals which have been left which have connected. So red right W is an input post. So definitely I'm just going into mention it here in our, and the uh, subscript shows me that the red right signal is coming from which uh, stage is coming from the right back stage because the right back stage have, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think we have forget here. Oh, sorry, that definitely we have made a show that the red right of you will going to be an output from our memory cycle, right? So here we are just going to connect the red right of to our memory cycle. And then we uh, just connected here also the red right W, so it's connected. Then RDW, and now I know that RDW is a destination register which will going to be a wire of my five bits. Mentioning a five bit wire here. And RDW will going as an input towards my decode cycle, which will be as an, coming from an output from, uh, you can say, my memory cycle. Actually, I'm just connected from the memory cycle because I already introduced the register inside the memory cycle, right? So as you can see here, that, that it is an, just an output and just going back towards the uh, stage without any going any further uh, right back. It's not getting used into any right back logic or right back stage also. And there is no other register has been introduced in the right back. So definitely I just connected from my memory stage output. So you can do that as well. Okay, then result W. I know that this is an output port, uh, input port, which is of 32 bits. So just going to connect my decode result. Now this is the port, which is definitely coming from my uh, right back stage definitely because we have a mux logic there so i have to connect from the right rather than connecting from directly to the memory stage right so this is how we have connected our decode now these are the input output signals definitely you can see that all of these are output with a substrate of e so i'm just going to uh, bench, use this okay so reg right e will be an output port and then it will going to be connected as an input port of my Okay, then you, we have seen that ALU source is also a single bit. Going to connect here and towards the execution cycle. Memory write and result source both are of a single bit input outputs. So definitely just And then the result source is also single bit wire. You must be thinking that why I'm not checking for it uh, on the other modules that I maybe there's a result source which can connecting to be key to some module, but it is not because the E will be going to connect out uh, uh, become as an output of M and that output M will be going to connect to a nest day. So definitely we have declared a new wire for that again. Okay. Okay, so branch is also a single bit. Uh, here you can also declare the wires as per the stages name that you can declare the all wires of the fetch cycle then decode. It's up to you that how you want to uh, declare your wires to make your uh, code simpler and easy to understand. Okay, so here we know that ALU control is a three bit signal. So mentioning a wire, three bit. Control 
will be connected to the ALU controller. Okay, then RD1 uh, is definitely an output def uh, output of the, so it will get 32 bits. And same with goes with the RD2, so just quickly check them here. Okay, so RD1 will be connected to RD1, RD2 will be connected as an RD2. Same is with the immediate extension, E will also work to be a 32 bit wire. Okay, RDE will going to be a board of five bits because it is a destination register. So I have to mention, okay, let's mention it before so that we can distinguish between E stages. RDE will be going to connect with the RDE. Right now we go with the PCE value. Right, so now you can see that all those values have been uh, mentioned such a way that E, D, and all of that uh, mentioned that way. So definitely we can have different uh, wires of different stages here. Now you can see that the code have been completely attached with all the modules. So now it's our time to connect our uh, execute cycle. But most of the signals of the execute have already covered as an input which have been uh, outputs. So all you have to connect the output post and just connect it to the so right ramp will be connected as the output of the execute cycle and act as an input. So I have mentioned it here as well. As you can see, the regularized signal here have been mentioned multiple times. Regularized W from the right back stage, from E stage, and from the M stage. So definitely there is a multiple declaration will be happening here. And same it goes to the membrane W will be input. Here will be an output, and here I'm going to declare this. Right, then we have a result source and um, which is going to be output of the execute cycle and input of the file memory cycle. The RDM is an output and will be an input as it is as mentioned here. C plus 4M. Here we go, PC plus 4M. Okay, then we have write data M, which will, oh, but this is a new wire we are declaring for the first time. So, write data M is an output of the execute. Uh, right, and becomes the input of our memory stage. And ALU result M is also an output of our execute and input of our memory stage. So uh, here you can see that our execute have been connected uh, completely. Now all we have to do is to connect our memory state with our uh, what you can see with the right back. So, so there is a few signals that write right, right with a single bit, so the is single bit. So just declare it here and all the signal declaration have been confirmed, complete. Right, so we have a PC plus 4W, which is a 32 bit. Uh, definitely we have not used this PC plus 4 anywhere. So you can uh, put that port empty also, but just to make connection properly, I'm just mentioning that. So RD the four bit signals are also complete and three bit signals are also complete. And then we have a LU result. And then we have our read data of you. So this uh, conclude our connection of all the modules together. And you can see that on the top module, I have just declared all the wires. There are not a single bit of register which have been used because all the register declaration I have done is internally to internal modules. You can either uh, remove those register and you can declare them on the top here, but 
just to keep the code simple and easy to understand. That's why we have included all those edges inside the module. So see, I have all of our modules have been connected. And so let's start with our test bench here. I'm going to make a new file and just name it as a pipeline db.v. Even this is a top file. So just quickly going to make it db and there is no inputs. Right. Definitely I know that all I either have only two inputs here, uh block and reset. So I don't need any of the other inputs and I'm going to just generate a block here quickly. Uh, I'm, the block I'm going to generate is of 50 nanoseconds. Right, so hashtag 50. And then I am just using to initial begin block to dump my variables or to, you can say how to make my dump file. Okay. So definitely we can uh, look at the waveform we are getting for debugging and understanding the working and the second there will be having an initial begin block for providing my input. So as we know there will no such input I have to provide just I have to provide the reset signal that I'm just going to reset my code first initially for 200 nanoseconds and then I'm just going to remove my reset make by making my reset bit high and just have to wait I will be waiting for thousand cycles so that multiple as you instruction can be performed and we can see the waveform and then I am going to finish my execution. Definitely, we have to include the uh, finish uh, command because the clock is going to generate uh, uh, continuously. So if you don't provide the finish signal, it will going to be work on continuous and the simulation will not going to be stopped. So for that, we have to mention the finish signal. Okay, so we are done with our test page and top module. So let's uh, try to run here. So pipeline TV and our pipeline top. Okay, I hope. Okay, so you can see that uh, we have got some include errors the errors because we have included the internal modules but we haven't included our files name so just I'm quickly going to include those okay so fetch cycle dot v we just going to copy this quickly for Let's call the code, execute, memory, and write back. So here it becomes the code, here it becomes execute, here it becomes memory, and here it becomes write back, right? So let's start again and see. Okay. So include file decode uh, cycle dot b. Okay, I think I've made a spelling mistake here. Right. So uh, I guess decode. Okay, I have a spelling mistake. And I'll see. Okay, so there is no syntax error. This means that our all of our coding has been done successfully, and there is no syntax error. So without any delay, just write our our PVP file. So as you can see here, that the test bench have been terminated at twelve hundred. Okay, so but I get I guess an error at dumb file. Uh, okay, here I forget this will be a dumb bars or dumb file. All right, so let's just quickly recompile it. And here you can see that the VCV file has been open and the pipeline is detected at twelve hundred nanoseconds. So without let's open our GTK wave here. Okay, so as I have told you that oh, okay, I forgot to mention that the code we are going to have run here that I have made a small code here. As you can see, uh, the code I am running that I am just uh, adding uh, in first initializing my fifth register with five number and six register three and it's adding a performing and add operation on both of them. So we know that the five plus is going to be an A, right? And the answer will going to be seven to the seven register. And for the second set of instructions, what I'm doing that I'm loading a value from my zero position of the memory location, which is definitely going to be a zero and saving to the eight register and just add I going to add a, uh, initialize my nine register with a value of one and you're going to perform an add operation, both of them. So I can say zero plus one going to provide me an answer of one and we're going to save it into the text register. 
So definitely you have used, you can use this Venus uh, simulator to code your code and then when you perform, go to the simulator tab and you reassemble the from the editor, you can dump the code has exact decimal file. So you can see that they have provided the machine code of all the instruction, which you can just simply put into our here the memory. I have generated a memory file X in which I have just uh, copy paste all the X which have been provided by eliminating the zero X because that is uh, belong to the string. So I just uh, include the machine coder, which will going to be read directly from my memory X file. And so I don't have to manually provide an instruction towards, uh, to, uh, to my instruction memory first and then, or write it going, uh, manually going and writing into the, my memory location. So what I do, I can do, I can just use the memory file hex and, uh, just copy paste all my machine code here and then it can be read automatically by my simulations. So here, what we are going to do that we are going to, uh, make a groups of the signal. So definitely we can see how our data has been flowing here. So let's start with our first clock and recess signal. So for the uh, grouping of the signal, what you can do, just click on the clock signal and press the G button. So it will tell you a prompt that enter a group name. So you can enter a group name that I'm naming as a global inputs. Okay. So here you can see that I'm just going, I group clock and reset as a global input. And you can go into the pipeline top and by clicking first, let's uh, look at the fast signal. And what I can do is I just going to select all and append it. Right. So again, going to make a group of fetch cycle. Okay. So just remove the clock and reset signal so that it doesn't come again and again. Okay, so you can, I, uh, we have to group our signals in such a way that we can uh, look at the whole flow that how our instruction flows. So first, uh, what I'm going to see into the D that, uh, let's say what signal should I taking as a first. So first I will be getting a PC source E, which will be act as a mux and the PC target here, right? And definitely there will be a, I guess, PC F, uh, Okay, let's not uh, look at this signal, I think, because it will going to make things a little bit of complex. So I'm just going to select all of these quickly. Okay, let's take our signals from the pipeline top, right? So just going to append all of them and we can uh, group them easily. Okay, for the fast cycle, I know the uh, inputs are, uh, you can look at the your board as well that for the fast cycle, uh, fetch have the PC source E, PC target as an input. So I'm just going to use those input as a PC source E. Uh, here it is, the first signal and the PC target E. And then the output for that is instruction D, uh, I guess the PC plus 4D and the PC D. So first I'm placing PC because I want to know what is the current PC of my program counter, then what insertion I've been uh, uh, fetched from the memory and what is the PC plus for the next value of my PC, right? This is the group of the fetch cycle. Let's make a group of our decode cycle. Okay, so these are also acting as an output and input of the decode cycle. So I'm just going to look at the outputs of the decode cycle that uh, what uh, signals are getting input to the decode and what are main outputs. So three inputs have been already mentioned above, so I don't need to use that. The rice is the rest, right? W, rest, right? Uh, all of these. So I'm going to use three D signals. Uh, but let's use into the end of the, not here, but in the end of our write back cycle so that we can know how things have been moving. Oh, uh, I can, let's use here as well. We can make, okay, so reg, right? W. Okay, let's keep, uh, then we have uh, not result source W, RDW, and then we have a result W, I guess. Yeah. So what I can do that I may further make it group as a register right back because it, it is going to be right back into the register, right? So we can look at the right back uh, cycle of our code. Uh, so it will make a easy. But in the decode, the other signals which are going to be act as an output are all the signals which have a subscript of E in them. So just quickly add E. So starting with our ALU source E, because they are the control signals, ALU control, and then branch. 
memory write uh, PCE definitely is a PCP PC plus 4E so it's keeping a PCE PC plus 4E on the top and then we have a RD1 because these are the outputs and from the code stage which are going to be at the input RDE definitely the destination as well so keeping on top uh, because that is not of use uh, reg write E it's also control signal is also it okay so just remove this so you can see that reg all the e signal subsets have been put into the eco plate right now uh, okay there will be on immediate as well so these are the signals which are output of the decode stage and going to the execute stage and but these are reg write w rd w and result w are coming from the right back stage i have mentioned it here because uh this will going to be act as a write back of the register so we can look at it here i can also show you that the right back but you can may get confused so right now let's keep it here then we can move it afterwards after the code now let's make a group of our execute cycle okay for in the execute cycle all the signals have been already mentioned which are going to be input into the uh, e state so what I'm going to do that just I'm going to uh, declare uh, all the M signals here, right? So in M is ALU result M. Then we have a memory control signals. Uh, RDM, I guess PC plus 4M. And if we have a reg right M. Result source M. We keep in memory right above. And write data M, which will be the output port of uh, execute and put as a memory cycle so these are and the rest signals are of my memory so alu result w okay so these are the combined stroke uh, let's keep bring this register right back here okay so these are the right back signal so you can see that i have broke all of these signals and you can save this file as a write save file as well and name is at any of the signals so i'm naming as pipeline uh, so it will going to be saved as a gtk file so you can uh, just open it again when you want to review the old signal again right so just okay here you can see that all of our signals are exactly the x and why these are x uh, there should not be an x signal propagating uh, because we have already mentioned it all at reset of all of the signals all of our registers should get reset uh, properly right as we have provided a one cycle so definitely all of my modules should have get reset so let's just reload this file and see okay definitely there may be some error uh, pc target e okay so let's just uh, debug into further like i'm going to see that fetch signals maybe that there's something in the fetch signal that is getting it making it uh, to the X stage. So, okay, I got it. Uh, the reason it is getting, but it should not be uh, PC source E. Yes. Let me add a reset logic here because what I'm taking that my values are not getting reset properly here. Okay, let's see at the first cycle that either we are getting an output from our PC or not. So our PC, I guess I so our PC program counter is we have PCF, right? So let's look at the PCF signal. Okay, it is also an X. So maybe we are having an issue with the PC counter then. Program counter is PC next or what clock? Okay, so you can see that the clock here is Z. Why the clock is Z here? That maybe. Did I forget to connect the clock? Patch, we have mentioned the clock here. Yeah, the best cycle have a clock and reset. 
that is strange why we are having an issue in the clock why my clock is set here let's see the first cycle of clock okay it is also set. maybe best cycle okay so what is the possible thing which we have been missing here as we have a clock signal at our pipeline top i guess not then that will be issue oh we have a z clock did i run my pipeline Based on that, we support the issue. Can we be on the Let's see at our files. We are forgetting something. Tutorials and to describe for source. Okay, so the error we are facing because the uh, where we are seeing all the waveform are going to be our X because uh, we have forget to mention the third module as a our top module into the test bench as a third and we haven't connected to a clock and reset code into that's where it is going. Uh, there are no clock and reset provided to our module top module. So after initializing our pipeline top in our uh, test bench and after running the simulation, now you can see here that we are getting some of the output signals here. So let's uh, go to it uh, one by one. Definitely there is a clock and reset signal. They definitely have provided a clock of 100 nanoseconds. Uh, so after 200 nanoseconds, we have uh, released our Z, uh, reset. And here you can see that in, in, uh, when we were testing our single cycle cores. So at, as soon as we remove the reset, we get our some of the output, the insertion get fetch and the operation have been done at the same cycle. And we also get the result at the cycle. But here you can see that at the first cycle, there is no output. All of the values have been zero. Why? Because this is a pipeline, the instruction get fetched, but it's not, uh, and it is also mapped towards the register. But as we know that the basic behavior of the register, that is get update on every clock cycle. It update after a clock cycle. So when the uh, next positive edge going to become, so you are going to see that currently the value which is getting flop into a register will be going to be updated over next cycle. So it is uh, here, which is also happening as you can see. At the very first clock cycle, all of the values are zero. As I mentioned, that instruction D is an output port of the first cycle, but is the input of the decode cycle, right? So it means when the uh, values get updated into the instruction D, so the decode gets, uh, the instruction is getting decoded at that time. So here you can see that at the very next clock cycle, our instruction D get updated. Uh, as we can also check it out by here that the first instruction was add I X5, X0 and 5. This is a machine code 005 00293. So you can see that the first instruction has been fetched successfully and mapped to a uh, decode stage where it is getting a decode and the PC was got also updated by plus four. But here you can see that again, all the signals are uh, uh, zero or uh, uh, initialized to default values. The reason is again the same that it is a pipeline stage. So definitely currently our, there is no signal or no current, uh, uh, there is no Future uh, instruction have been performed into execute stage or memory stage. So that's why all of these signals are initialized to zero. But uh, right now we are only occupied the fast state and the decode state. So definitely here, the when the decode uh, instruction is getting updated, the, the next instruction should have been fast here. And it is also mapped to the register which we are going to see that it will going to update into the next cycle. As you can see here that the next instruction get updated here, fetch instruction D. But at the same time, we get some of the signals activated here which are not of the current instruction, which is getting fed. That is not, these are the control signals are not generated for 003-00313, but they are generated for 005-00293, which was done in the previous cycle, but get for, flop into the register and are getting updated here. So here you can see that the RD destination is a five, right? As uh, again, I'm going to the code that our destination was register number five so here you can see that my destination register got updated five i have alu control signal one because it is going to select the immediate value because it is an immediate instruction branch is zero memory reg rate is one that if i'm going to go into write the register back 
uh, because the value have to get updated into the fifth register. Here you can see that the RD1 is the value you're getting of zero because uh, the initial address of the source one is zero. The source two register was X5, but as we have not initialized our register memory, uh, register file with any of the values that we are getting an X here. Uh, so it's very common in the simulation, but definitely we are not uh, used this uh, approach in our hardware testing, right? And the immediate value which is uh, got is of five. On the very next cycle, so this is the decode have been completed and right now it is getting executed. Uh, these signals show that my, uh, because all of these signals are activated of the E state, that means that all of these are values are provided into the execute cycle where my instruction is getting executed, where my five plus zero is getting add. But, and definitely the result must have been generated, but I cannot see it right now because it is going to flap into flock into the register and I get, uh, we'll going to see that update value of the ALU result in our my next cycle. As you can see here, that currently my ALU result is zero, but it get updated in the next cycle because it is a pipeline. So here you can see that I uh, let's uh, go back to the from the top. Currently, I'm getting a fetching a new instruction right now, uh, which was maybe some other instruction, fourth instruction of the state because. If the third instruction is in, in the decode state, so right now I've been fetching the fourth instruction. So you can see that I'm also fetching an instruction. I have a decode uh, instruction at decode stage as well. I am also executing the uh, previous instruction, which was 0030313 at the moment. And I am also uh, at the memory stage of my sec first instruction. So this is how our pipeline stages has worked. As you go and you can see here, the result of the ex execution is every flop that zero plus five, uh, definitely we know that zero plus five is going to generate a result of five and that it is going to get right back into the next. As here, you can see the red right signal, red right re uh, register destination and red result is five. So it just means that these are registers that get answers getting right back to my registers. But after how many cycles, if you count from the very first cycle, that it is a first clock cycle, second clock cycle, third clock cycle fourth clock cycle and fifth clock cycle. At the fifth clock cycle, my value is getting updated into the register. This is because we have in, uh, designed a five stage pipeline. If we have designed a nine stage pipeline, so this, the same register was going to be updated after the nine stages, yeah, nine clock cycles. Or if you design a 15 stage pipeline, so that the register value is going to be updated after 15 clock cycles, right? So because it is a very basic five stage implementation to so our answer is getting at the fifth stage, so now let's see the whole flow of the current well, uh, clock cycle that my first instruction is getting at the right back stage. My second instruction is at the, uh, what you can say is at the memory stage, right? Because here you can see the answer is three. The answer was getting generated by three because my second instruction was add I x six zero x three. So I'm adding a zero and three. And so my answer was three. So my, the second instruction is the memory stage. And if you go a little bit back, uh, my third is instruction is at the execution state where it is getting addition, uh, right? And my fourth instruction is the decode stage and my first instru uh, fifth instruction is at the best stage. So you can see that my whole pipeline has been occupied by each different instruction. One fifth instruction is getting fed, fourth instruction is getting decode, third instruction is getting execute, second instruction is at the memory state and the first instruction is getting write back. So this is how the pipeline works in actual that definitely all at in the single size cycle you are looking at the at very in individual clock cycle you are seeing that the instruction is getting paired decode execute and also access the memory and also getting to the right back but here it is not happening like that here for the first few cycles there is no operation getting right back so definitely you can say this is a weight of waste of two cycles but after that we are getting right back one after another that we are getting the first instruction right back, then second instruction, then third instruction, then fourth, then fifth, and then sixth instruction. So this is the basic uh, uh, simulation of the uh, our pipeline stage. But now let's, I have a one question for you. Just look at these answers, okay? If I just look at the right back stage, it makes sure that my first instruction was generating an answer of five. So the, my first value should be updated at the five value to the switch register, which is happening that my fifth register is getting updated by the five value. Similarly, my second instruction was going to update the sixth register, register number six with the value of three. So as you can see, that is also happening that my sixth register is getting updated with the value of three. But the third instruction was, uh, the answer which would have to be updated on the seven register was the addition of five plus three. So it was making a value of eight, but here you can see the value is X. Why is that X? 
it should be the value 5 plus 3. I should get a, a, a value of addition into that. But here you can see that my value are getting x. Similarly, uh, let's move towards the next instruction. That the fourth instruction was load, but that my data will be load from the zero location to the x8 value. So you can see that my the x8 register is getting updated with the zero value because definitely I have that's been put into the data memory, so the default value is zero. And then after that, I have my ninth register, which have to be get updated by the one. So here you can see that my nine register is also getting updated by one value. And after that, I have an, again an add instruction, which are going to add the eight and nine registers that is zero plus one. And the answer will be a one, which is going to be seven to the 10th register. But again, you can see that here it is happening that the 10th register is not getting updated and I'm getting a value of X. This is because again, you can see that both of these instructions, that the third instruction and the sixth instruction is not getting the correct data. What can be the possible reason for that? So one of the possible reasons, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that there are few hazards we are get occur in the pipeline stages. And this is what shows that the, we have encountered and hazard that the hazard we have encountered right now is a data hazard because we are running back to back instruction as our register is getting updated after a five cycles, but we are executing or decoding the multiple instruction at the same time. So you can just imagine that the third instruction is getting decoded here, but my values have not been updated till yet. My fifth register and sixth register have not been updated yet. So that's why the value read from the registers were X and X. So when both the values are X, so when both values get addition by when definitely you are get, uh, adding don't care with the don't care. So definitely you are going to get the result of the don't care because you are decoding the instruction before the values gets updated. So this is the data hazard we are, which we are encountering in this our simulation. So definitely we are going to see how we are going to resolve these hazards and what are these and how we can resolve them in the near future in future lectures as well. So stay tuned for that. So that is all for today. I hope this made very much clear of the understanding of the pipeline. We have completed our top module and now we are going to discuss about the hazards in our next few lectures. So thank you very much. Uh, take care. Allah.